Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Every year, the U.S. Navy spends millions of dollars on its fleet, equipping its ships with the latest technology and state-of-the-art safety features to ensure their ships can withstand the harshest conditions and protect the nation's interests. However, danger might still occur, developing terrifying probabilities of sinking in the middle of the sea. Several factors can contribute to the sinking of a naval vessel. A common cause of the sinking is flooding. In such conditions, water enters the vessel through a breach in the hull or the vessel superstructure. While the vessel's weight increases gradually, the volume of the water displaced remains the same, creating an imbalance. Missiles, collisions, leakages at the ballast tanks, malfunctioning of critical systems, poor weather conditions, or human error might also cause catastrophic scenarios. When a ship is damaged, water can rapidly enter the hull, causing the vessel to become unstable and eventually sink. In such situations, the crew's priority is to control the flooding by isolating the damaged area and using watertight doors and hatches to contain the water. The crew also works to pump water out of the affected area while balancing the ship's weight to prevent capsizing. To prepare for such disasters, the Navy conducts rigorous training for its sailors. Flooding training is one typical exercise that sailors undergo to ensure their readiness in case flooding occurs. The drill involves the development of real-life scenarios in a controlled environment. During the exercise, sailors must first inform everyone about the risk, then close all water doors. The training also involves testing the evacuation plan. The damage control team has to work together to combat flooding, cold, noise, wetness, stress, and darkness. It's a real flooding environment that requires the team's speed and precision. After locating the damage, sailors must isolate the source of water ingress and then deploy countermeasures. They learned how to use various shipboard tools and equipment to prevent further flooding. Such as shoring types, pumps and patching materials. Depending on the location of the damage and its shape and dimensions, these sailors together determine the suitable means to stop the flooding. The goal is to keep the ship afloat and stable while damage control efforts are made. All of this is done while ensuring the safety and survival of the crew.
The Navy also employs various advanced technologies to prevent flooding and improve safety. For example, some ships are equipped with water detection systems and automatic shutoff valves that can isolate damaged areas before they become flooded. If the flooding cannot be controlled, the Navy must abandon the ship. It's a nightmare scenario that implies the evacuation of the crew. Each Navy ship is equipped with several life rafts designed to be self-inflating and can hold a specific number of people. The exact number of life rafts on a ship varies depending on the size and type of the vessel. However, Mark 7 and Mark 8 are the standard life rafts for the U.S. Navy. For instance, the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier is equipped with 20-person Mark 8 life rafts. These rafts are made of polyurethane coated nylon fabric a durable material that can withstand extreme weather conditions. The rafts are kept in a lifeboat canister, along with a gas inflation cylinder. The canister is a hard fiberglass shell. Additionally, these rafts come with an automatic inflation system. This system is activated by a hydrostatic release mechanism, which automatically inflates the raft when it comes into contact with water. This ensures that the raft is always ready for use, even if the crew is unable to inflate it manually. While the chances of needing to use a life raft may be small, it's critical that the crew is trained and prepared to handle any situation that may arise. Therefore, the U.S. Navy carries out periodic abandoned ship drills to ensure the crew is well-versed in emergency procedures and can handle life rafts. Abandoning the ship is an overwhelming moment for the crew, but for the U.S. Navy, the crew's lives are priceless. As the commander of the naval vessel orders them to give up on the ship, sailors reach the canisters. They use their muscle power to launch it into the water. Sailors are instructed to look forward and move away from the damaged ship to save their lives. Sailors jump from the ship deck into the water one by one, then swim toward the life rafts where their colleagues help them to get in. The commanding officer then provides the nearest land's exact location, how far it is, in which direction and weather conditions, and all the technical information that will help the crew to survive. Besides life rafts deployment and evacuation, the drills test the recruits' physical ability, capacity to take orders, and capability to act under pressure. Furthermore, the drills help identify any issues or areas for improvement in the emergency response plan, allowing the Navy to refine and improve its safety procedures continually. In deep sea environments, the U.S. Navy uses the Undersea Rescue Command to rescue ships and personnel. The URC is a specialized unit of the United States Navy that focuses on deep sea search and rescue operations. URC operates a fleet of advanced submersibles and other specialized equipment. 
including a remotely operated vehicle to locate and rescue submarines in distress at sea. The URC is capable of conducting open hatch rescue operations anywhere in the world, and they can do so within 96 hours. It can operate in sea state three and down to a maximum depth of 2,000 feet of seawater. I read you Lima Charlie, over and out. The pressure here can crush light objects in a matter of seconds, which is why the URC is internally pressurized up to five atmospheres, making it perfect for the unique challenges of deep sea rescue operations. The unit is staffed by highly trained divers and technicians who undergo extensive training to prepare for the use of advanced technology in submarine rescue scenarios. In 2017, the U.S. Navy mobilized the Undersea Rescue Command to rescue the Argentine Navy submarine ARA San Juan in the South Atlantic. During this rescue operation, the URC deployed two rescue assets, the submarine rescue chamber, as well as the pressurized rescue module. In cases where submersibles or other equipment cannot reach the location, the Navy relies on its expert divers to complete the rescue operation. These mariners can go anywhere to save those in trouble, no matter the conditions. It is a highly risky job, and divers must navigate through potentially dangerous conditions, such as limited visibility, strong currents, and unpredictable marine life to reach and extract those needing rescue. Hence, the U.S. Navy regularly exercises to strengthen its capabilities. Divers train to employ the multiple tools and equipment needed to complete the rescue operation. To access the area rapidly, the Navy might use aircraft to launch divers from air to sea using parachutes. One of the critical rescue exercises the U.S. Navy conducts is Chile Mar 3. A joint submarine escape and rescue exercise conducted in partnership with the Chilean Navy. The exercise helps ensure that the two navies are ready to respond quickly and effectively in the event of a submarine emergency. Is open. During the training, the Navy's deep submergence unit deployed a pressurized rescue module to simulate real-life rescue scenarios. The rescue was performed on the Chilean submarine CSS Carrera. The U.S. Navy also participates in a large-scale submarine rescue exercise led by NATO. The collaborative training enhances the capabilities of the participating navies by deploying and testing the latest technology. For instance, the Polish Navy demonstrated its evacuation emergency procedure using a special survival suit referred to as an orange suit. When a submariner is in danger, he or she gets into this suit and takes a breath from the space without water or the available breathing system, then closes the suit and goes through the opening. The suit enables the submariner to float to the surface quickly. The U.S. Navy's commitment to ensuring the safety and survival of its sailors is of utmost importance. While the probability of a disaster happening in the open sea may be small, the Navy has put in place various measures to ensure the safety and survival of the crew in the event of an emergency. Through rigorous training, advanced technologies and specialized rescue units, 
the Navy is always prepared to respond to any disaster or unforeseen occurrence. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.